Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'd like to share with you some Father's Day gifts that I made using items that I purchased from Dollar Tree. So if you're interested, then just keep watching. For my personalized coasters, I picked up four coasters from the Dollar Tree, as well as some of their acrylic paint, a sponge brush, Mod Podge, and some of my pictures that I printed from my computer. So the first thing I did was add one coat of my acrylic paint to my coasters and I allowed that to dry. Next, I added a layer of the Mod Podge to the top of the coaster as well as to the back of the photo. I used the Dishwasher Safe Mod Podge for this project. I won't actually place these in the dishwasher, but I am going to use them. And I wanted them to be able to withstand any drink condensation. If I was only going to display them, I would have used the Dollar Tree Mod Podge instead. Next, I gently placed the photo on top of the coaster, and then I used a piece of wax paper to remove as many of the air bubbles as possible. I printed my images from a inkjet Epson printer that I purchased from Walmart some time ago. I printed a set on photo paper and a set on copy paper. I think that they both worked out the same. You just have to be a lot more gentle with the images that are printed on regular copy paper. I repeated those steps for all four coasters and I allowed them to dry for about an hour. Next, I added three additional layers of the Mod Podge on top of my coaster, allowing an hour drying time in between. I also repeated the same steps of smoothing out the air bubbles between each layer. If there was an air bubble, I just poked a small hole using an X-Acto knife, and then I pushed out as much of the air as possible, and then added my next layer of the Mod Podge. To complete the project, I baked my coasters in the oven for one hour at 175 degrees and here was my finished look. For my valet tray, I used two of the 8x10 picture frames, one of the mirrored frames, I used two of these metal angle squares, I used some black ribbon, some fixed all adhesive, glue gun, and glue sticks. I have a complete list for all three projects down in the description box. So the first thing I did was remove the contents from my 8x10 frames, and then I removed the black tabs from each of those frames. Next, I flip my frame over and then I glue the second frame on top of that frame using my Fix All Adhesive. I then added some of the strong adhesive to the inside top frame and then I placed my first glass piece on top of that adhesive. If you decide to recreate this project, please be careful when handling this glass. It is super thin and very sharp around the edges. I then cleaned my glass and then I removed the mirror from its frame and used a thin layer of the strong adhesive to attach the mirror in the center of the clear glass. I then added some additional fix all adhesive around the sides of my top frame and then I placed my second clear glass piece on top of my mirror. I made sure that my mirror and my glass on the bottom as well as the bottom of my top piece of glass was as clean as possible because once I place this second piece of glass on top, I won't have access to be able to clean those pieces again. 
I quickly learned that the glass is slightly smaller than the frame. So I pushed the second piece of glass to the top right of the frame. And then I added some additional adhesive to make sure that that side of the frame was holding that glass in place. Next, I added my two metal angle squares on top of my picture frame. These angle squares are super heavy duty and really great quality. So I was glad to be able to find these at the Dollar Tree. Next, I added my black grow grain ribbon around my picture frame. I was really happy to find this ribbon. You usually see this at places like Michael's, but it's really just a textured ribbon and it worked perfectly for this project. To complete the project, I added a little of the fix all to the edges of the cut ribbon to avoid any fraying. I cleaned off my glass and here was my finished look. And finally, for my keepsake box, I used three of these tower games, four of these four by six magnetic photo frames, two of these small two by three magnetic frames. They come with a frame and a mini chalkboard. I also used one of these super cute world's greatest dad statues, my black acrylic paint, sponge brush, fixed all adhesive and my crafter's glue. So the first thing I did was build my box. To do so, I glued 18 of the wood pieces together using my crafter square glue. I made a total of four of these pieces in total. I also made two of these. These are 14 pieces and they will serve as the top and bottom of my box. 
I let all six pieces dry for about an hour and then I started putting my box together. Thirty minutes later, I painted my box and my box top with my black acrylic paint. Once those pieces were dry, I used my Fix All Adhesive to attach my Thumbs Up statue to the center of my box top. I let that dry for a couple of hours and I was really pleased with how my black box turned out but I decided at the last minute to take it up a notch so I cut the magnet from this picture frame and chalkboard set with two packages. I had four magnets in total. These plastic frames are super thin. I just used a regular pair of scissors to cut the magnets out. It was similar to cutting up a credit card. I then used my strong adhesive to attach a magnet to all four sides of my box. I attached my magnets and I allowed my box to dry overnight. The next day, my box was completely dry and I was able to add those four by six magnetic picture frames around the box as well. I think this project turned out super cool. Not only can I open and close my keepsake box with that cute thumbs up statue at the top, but I can also house four pictures on my box as well. I think that this project by far is my favorite. But what do you guys think? Are these projects something that you may consider making for your husband or father this year for Father's Day? I hope so. So hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. If so, please like, comment, and share. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. And be sure to turn on your notifications so that you don't miss my next video. Remember, I upload new videos every single week. So until next time, guys, bye.